Tough during the interview. She just kept riding roughshod over me. She just had her own agenda. Later that night, she texted our team. She said, Miranda's being stupid. She's at the hotel bar. Is there any way to move quicker and get her help as we're here now instead of waiting to see Dr. Phil on Wednesday? I've never had anybody contact a team and try to take control like that. Yeah, let so, me have this. And you've got some tape. Tape bump in 41. Well, here we go. Mom shot some B-roll of her daughter while she was there. Roll 41 track. Three seconds till we have less. In some of these pieces, you can see she's drinking a little. And I'm blamed for being an alcoholic. Whenever I watched a functioning alcoholic my whole life. But mom was helpful in some ways. But yeah. once she showed up in L.A., she was a little tougher than I thought to deal with. Mom was difficult during the shoot. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to ask her about that. Two, so stay one, loose. Roll 41 track. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, mom says her daughter is a rebel. You jumped out the window because you were drunk with no clothes what on. What does and that have to do with me being rebellious? And one... You got fired for falling asleep on the <laughs> yeah. lifeguard stand. Yeah, I did. Hot mess. You ought to have the world on a string. And instead, you got a smart mouth and a lazy ass. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. You've never had anybody working harder to bring you to the threshold of change than right now. love when somebody writes in begging for my help and then the minute they get here they start trying to dictate terms well that's what's going on with my guest kathy who claims her 22 year old daughter is a hateful drunk this is what she told our field producer tony who you just saw me talking to backstage take a look Miranda is a mess and causes havoc in her life. How many seconds do we have left? She has a problem with alcohol. Miranda drinks at least six days a week. Her brain is not functioning when she's drinking. It turns her from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde. Okay, so my stepdad's an alcoholic. When Miranda's drinking, she's very hateful.
hurtful. She turns mean. It's aggressive. And I'm blamed for being an alcoholic whenever I watched a functioning alcoholic my whole life. Miranda's drinking has been so bad, she's received two DUIs. The first time we went on a trip with some friends, and I told Miranda, don't drink and drive. The second time, Miranda blacked out, and they found her laying on the ground. I don't think to this day that Miranda's learned her lesson. Miranda and I argue every day. And you called me a disgrace. No, I did it. Not today. Not today, so that makes it okay, because you didn't say it today. I think Miranda was probably 16 when she started smoking weed. This is medical marijuana. She keeps telling me, oh, I've got medical marijuana. I'm like, Miranda, how can you have medical marijuana? You don't have a medical marijuana card. Where did you get medical marijuana from? Don't worry about it. I've known that Miranda has done a lot of things, but I just thought, oh, these are just kids, and it's just a phase that they're going through, and hopefully they'll outgrow it. She hasn't outgrown it. Miranda just keeps on moving from one vice to another. Miranda has four choices. She will end up dead, she will end up killing someone, she'll go to jail, or she could change. Hi, Dr. Phil. She's the problem. Okay. There's your daughter saying you're the problem here. Yes. Are you? Um, I'm an enabler. I mean, but I'm not, I don't think I'm the problem. Are you a controller? Uh, I've been known to, I mean, I work in HR, so I'm an analyst. So <laughs> being controlling, you kind of need to control situations. But I'm not a, like, I don't control her. Well, I'm curious about that because you texted our producer. Yeah. And you said, I'm sorry it's late, and I'm texting. Miranda is in the bar here. Yeah. As I just called her, as she was to go and get us a soda. Yes. I really can't watch Miranda like this and have her here in L.A. being stupid. Yeah. Is there any way to move quicker and get her some help as we're here now <laughs> instead no. of waiting to see Dr. Phil and see what he has to say on Wednesday? Well, I, I, no, no, I, I was hoping to get her help w with you. I mean, I didn't mean it, I guess, to say, I Did didn't I, word it the right way. Well, no, you're an analyst in HR, so yeah. I assume you're fairly articulate. Well, but I deal with the, yeah. Did I read that right? No, you read it right. I, I, sh I didn't mean it. I wanted, well, I wanted to know what you have to say earlier, just not now. Oh, so you wanted want me to cancel <laughs> everything else I had done and come Sorry. over there that night and get with you, but you're not a controller. Okay, I'm obviously a control freak. <laughs> it's like, screw mm -hmm. him, get us some help over here now. No, it, it wasn't screw you. It was like, can he help us any sooner? On your schedule. Oh, so I am a controller. I've been talking to the production staff and they've been saying that you've been very difficult to deal with. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think you are. Okay. Um, I think you're sorry that it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah. I think you're sorry that it didn't work. I think you tried to control the situation, tried to control her, tried to control them, tried to dictate what was going on. And so I'm wondering if that's how you deal with your daughter. I, I don't know. It might be. Now, Miranda says she too. is not the one with the problem, that it's her nagging mother who she says tries to dictate everything, control mm -hmm. everything, choose what mm -hmm. shift she takes at work. I mean, just really controls everything. Miranda says, no question that she's made some stupid mistakes, but she says she doesn't have a corner on making bad decisions. Take a look. My mom knew that I was partying. Back when she should have really been parenting and setting those ground rules, she wasn't. First time I ever had a beer, I was 14 years old. When I was 15, that was the first time I ever got high. Pot is medicine for me now. I would rather smoke any day of the week than take a Xanax. Between 16 and 19, those were my huge party years. By the time I was 20 years old, I was chill. Another reason why I chilled out a lot is because I had Two DWIs. That first DWI, I didn't get it. Got my license back. I was still drinking and driving. I got there, ooh, nobody's catching me. The first one cost me $3,000, 100 hours of community service. Second one, $5,000. I have definitely learned my lesson. I don't care if I have a, a sip. I'm not getting behind the wheel ever again. I'm dealing with my DWIs. 
But who do you owe money to and you don't have a job? Do I pay them? Yes. Do you pay them? No. It's been 10 months since my last DWI, and my mom is, be real with yourself. Ah! I want you just to be real with yourself. I okay. am real. Alcohol? Yeah, I need to stop that. She'll say things like, I'm going to end up in prison. She tells me that I'm an alcoholic, so I must be a liar. I still drink. I don't get blacked out drunk, act all woo, out there, you know, but I still like to drink. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You know, and you're how old now? 22. 22. But you're still living mm -hmm. with your mother? Yes. Why? Well, I was dating my ex-boyfriend and me, him, and his roommate. We all lived together. Mm -hmm. And then they, for them, it was too much to handle. They weren't ready to no. move out on their no, own No, he, he up and left. She didn't even know he was moving out. Yeah, I got back from work and he was gone. It really boiled down to the pressure of living on your own. Yes, I had something to do with it, but it wasn't completely my own fault. You know? well, what part of it was your fault? I mean, are you saying that, like... Um, yeah, I was just partying too much. I was partying way too much. I was like, yeah, you know, I got my own place. And so I was just drinking whenever I wanted to. I didn't care about anybody else's opinions, especially my boyfriend at the time. And how long ago was that? Last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem with alcohol and drugs? Um, I would say I used to. Not anymore. Right. She you, thinks I, does, I do. Well, because when we were on the plane to come here, you ordered alcohol. And that was at, like, 9.05 in the morning. Yeah, I had, then, a, I had um, a mimosa. Yesterday morning, you had ordered alcohol. Do you, you have a problem with alcohol? No. But you were a lifeguard, and you got fired for falling asleep on the <laughs> yeah. lifeguard stick. Yeah, I did. At first, I kind of thought I was dreaming, and I'm like, oh, I fell asleep way longer than two minutes. Because you were drunk the night before and hung over on the lifeguard stand. But you were a lifeguard, right? Yeah. And you got fired just two months ago. Yeah. For falling asleep on the <laughs> yeah. lifeguard stand. Yeah, I did. Because you were drunk the night before. Yeah. And hung over on the lifeguard stand. Yeah. She was drinking. And, now, hang on. I'm really good at this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and this is what's called an interview. Sorry. And if I need any help, I know right where you are, because there's just three of us. Okay. As I was saying, you were hung over from being drunk the night before, fell asleep on the lifeguard stand, and yeah. so they came and said, uh, that's not really guarding. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. people could drown and then we would be liable, so you're gonna have to leave and not ever come back. Yeah. Okay, what'd you think about that? Um, well, I just woke up and I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, at first I kind of thought I was dreaming, then I'm like, oh, I fell asleep way longer than two minutes, man. But the police came. Well, yeah, because I technically that's endangering other human beings falling asleep when you're supposed to be guarding, like anything could have happened. So yeah, the cops have to come. And yeah. yeah okay, so here's the thing. If the way I look at something is in terms of determining whether something is normal or abnormal is it's abnormal if it interferes with the pursuit of healthy goals and healthy functioning. And if 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 you look at your relationship with alcohol, is it interfering with your pursuit of healthy goals and healthy functioning? Yeah, at times, for sure. Yeah. Yes. So if you've gotten two DUIs with $8,000 worth of fines and had your license suspended and gotten fired for endangering others on your job because you were entrusted with keeping <laughs> children safe yeah. in the water, um, it seems to me that that qualifies as a problem. And that was just two months ago that you lost that job. And then your mother tells me that you're here, that, that you're drinking in the morning on the way here, that you're drinking in the bar while you're here. And this is why you're here, coming to talk about, do you have a problem drinking? Yeah, hey, I got a problem. Fair enough. Um, is this a... Rebellion thing? What, what? Your mother says it's rebellion. She thinks everything is rebellion. It doesn't matter if you cough sideways. If she thinks everything's rebellious. Yeah. 
Um, well, even a broken clock's right twice a day. I mean, <laughs> is yeah. she right some of the time? Um, uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I don't really think she... Well, most of the time I don't think she's right, no. She thinks right. she knows everything, like how what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling. Sometimes I just drink not even, just to do it. Like, mm -hmm. the fact that, like, when I was on the plane, I just wanted to be able to say, you know what, I was flying to L.A., drinking a mimosa on a plane. I just wanted to be able to say I did that. Yeah, now you can. <laughs> You've said that yeah. in front of everybody. Uh, Miranda is currently unemployed, but she has a good explanation for that, and I want to hear it when we come back. Miranda got a job as a lifeguard. I received a phone call. They said Miranda has been found asleep at her post. I was really tired. I was like, man, I'm trying to close my eyes for two minutes. Somebody told my boss, hey, I think that lifeguard's asleep, man. Yeah, I lost my job. I told Miranda she has until January 9th to figure it out, give me a five-year plan. I'm expected to have my whole life figured out in six months. She asked me one day, what's your five-year plan? Hopefully to be alive, I don't know. I gave Miranda an ultimatum because I want her to change and I want her to believe me that I'm gonna throw her out in hopes that something's gonna click in her mind. I don't think she's gonna throw me out. She's all talk and no game. Miranda knows that I don't mean anything I say. I cannot let Miranda live on the street. Miranda says her mother is a controlling nag, but Kathy says, look, she just says she has no choice because her 22-year-old daughter is living in her home with no driver's license and no job. Miranda's drinking is affecting her jobs. I lost the nursing assistant job because I was working first shift. I had been out partying and drinking a lot. She was released from that job because she was hungover and she couldn't make it to work. You forced me to work first shift when you know I'm a second and third shift person, but that worked out with your schedule. I suggested that Miranda work the first shift. I thought she would be more responsible. I remember telling her, this isn't going to work out. I think even if Miranda had an evening job, she would lose it. I know she would. After Miranda lost her job, she got another job as a lifeguard. I received a phone call from the people at the pool. They said, Miranda has been found asleep at her post. Can you come and get her? This is where I used to work. What happened was I was really tired. I had drank the night before. That's kind of a key factor in there. I was sitting on stand. I had my tube. I had these sunglasses on. I was like, man, I'm just gonna close my eyes for two minutes. It looked like I was awake, but I was asleep. Somebody told my boss, hey, I think that lifeguard's asleep, man. Yeah, I lost my job because I fell asleep on stand. The company that Miranda was lifeguarding for told her to never come back again. So now Miranda has two DUIs. She's been fired from two jobs. She's living at home with mom and dad. I am not currently working at the moment. No, I'm not. Well, maybe it's her attitude about life in general because I made a list of some of her excuses. She said, well, mom is a baby boomer and things were cheaper then. Houses were just handed to them. Career doesn't just happen overnight. No. You need three jobs or rich parents to pay college and live on your own. Paying off college debt to go back, you, you, you owe $1,000 now. Need a job to move out in the car. I can't drive, totaled my car. Need pay a lawyer for DWI, you know, can't do that. It's just easier for her than it is for you, she right? She blames everyone else. I don't think I blame everybody else for anything. I just think that... Well, you really think it was easier a generation ago? Things were cheaper, so houses were just handed to them. Um, I guess that was more like a figure of speech because the house that I lived in my whole life was like her uncles or great uncles or something. She's had it forever. And, and it I'm was, still paying on And it was in her family. Like, for me, it's just the times have changed. Things are more expensive. Miranda, you don't It's have hard. Time and you live at home, and we have pay your electric, we give you food, 
I mean... Uh, you're my parents. I mean, I'm sorry. I didn't know you, I wasn't supposed to eat food at my house. I mean, Miranda's disrespectful at the house. She is destroyed. She spray-painted my roses. I'm just wondering if you're just being a victim. She spray-painted your roses? Silver. And she wrote, I'm a on a rock. Well, because her, my, my dad called me, he was drunk. She likes to say and her husband. He, he called me a bitch and a liar. So instead of and me- And you called him some names No, too. I didn't. Miranda says that her mother raised her in a cult-like church that did not prepare her for life in the real world. We're gonna talk about that next. And this interesting dynamic that I have found, and I'm gonna show you evidence of what I'm talking about. We'll be right back. All of my kids went to an accelerated Christian education school. I never even believed in Santa Claus, the tooth fairy. Miranda is not resentful that she had to go to a Christian school, but Miranda will tell you she's resentful. You're not obeying God or showing God. I'm not real. I grew up Pentecostal. I've always been a believer. My mom's whole life has been centered around the church, for sure. All of my kids went to an accelerated Christian education school. I never even believed in Santa Claus, the tooth fairy. I've never been trick-or-treating. Just believing in Santa Claus is a very innocent thing. Everyone believed in Santa Claus, and my mom was like, nope, Jesus' birthday. Miranda is not resentful that she had to go to a Christian school, but Miranda will tell you she's resentful. You're not obeying God or showing God. I'm not real. He's not real, and you wonder why. All your kids say the same thing. I don't go to church anymore. You know, a lot of the things that I was taught, I take a step back and I look at, and I just don't agree with, and I wouldn't teach my children. Miranda going to a Christian school does not have anything to do with us not getting along. Us not getting along is Miranda's rebellion. It, you think it has nothing to do with the church, it just is rebellion? Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with church, her and I rebellion, not getting along. I, like the word I mean, rebellion. what is she really rebelling against? I, I have no clue. Everything comes back to, would God love this? Would Jesus do this? Would would God do, I'm, I don't know, have I met God? Have I met Jesus? I don't know, let me sit down and talk to him and find out. It has nothing to do with anything. Miranda's mean, she's pushed me down when she's drunk before. Why are you telling me that? Just to give you insight as to how mean she can be and how her mental instability, she's like mentally unstable. Mm -hmm. She truly is. I don't feel and that I, way. I, I don't feel that way at all. She it's thinks alcohol, that about it's me. Medical. Uh, she thinks that I'm like super abuse. mentally unstable, and but I think abuse. she's super mentally unstable. Do you take pleasure in that? In, in what? In the fact that she is not stable enough to be out on her own. No, I don't take any pleasure in that. I want her to be stable enough to be on her own. Well, I'm curious about that because I, I, I do. I I pay a lot of attention to what people say yeah. and how they say it. You were talking about these lost jobs and I was looking at your face and then your face while you were saying some of the things you were saying. And yeah. let's take a look at this. Miranda's drinking is affecting her jobs. Why are you smiling when you say that? I I, I don't know. I didn't even know I was smiling. I, I was probably trying to emphasize it. I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I have a drinking problem. I smoke pot. I like to smoke pot. Yeah. What about like I admit to your my meds that you've diagnosed that it, yourself? I, yeah, I diagnosed with. myself and prescribed my own medication. That you have PTSD. That's what the doctor has told me. Well, listen, <laughs> like, your, your sarcasm is wasted on me. I think uh, if you think that's cute, it's not. If you think it's working for you in your life, it's not. You say that you really are wanting to figure something out. I mean, do you really? Or do you think everything's fine? If you think everything's fine, then go home. Why are you here? Well, no, um, I'm here because she she wanted to do this because she thinks I have such a bad problem. And So you and really believe that you're so. absolutely fine and you have nothing that you no, need to deal no, with? Because if you are, just go home. Thought it was cool. Well, then why are you sitting here with this smart-ass attitude? Because I don't buy it. Why are we even doing this? These people, they're not serious about this. Tomorrow, he went.
went from handsome star athlete to addict. This boy's gonna be D-E-A-D -E dead. Strokes, induced comas. Enabling's not a big enough word. I'm killing my own son. You have no idea how far I'm willing to go to get him off drugs. And if you get in the way, I'll run right over your ass. And the shocking moment. It's a confession. That could put him behind bars for life. That's tomorrow. Then on Thursday. Did he discover the children? He got in the vehicle and was screaming. I have been so angry. I just couldn't understand how it happened. That's Thursday. If you don't want to be here and you really think you've got it going on at 22, your life is rolling down the road and that you're just really productive, then, well, not, then one of us is a fool and I don't think it's me. Well, no, I do, yeah. So you may think that's, you may think it's cute and it's clever, but it doesn't, it, I'm not impressed. No, I do think you I need to get You got two DUIs and you don't have the right to be out on the road driving a car drunk when all of us are out there with our children and our lives. Right. And because you think you're Joe Cool, you're out there driving a car up and down the street. You I don't agree. have the right to do that. And if it was me, I'd have put you under the jail. That's what I would do, because you don't have a right to be out there driving around like that. You think it's cool and clever. Uh, to me, I, that's I not cool and clever. Cool. I never thought it was cool whenever I was, like, Well, I then why are you sitting here with this smart-ass attitude? Because I don't buy it. It's not, I don't mean to be, like, like that, but, like, when it comes to her and her making up stuff, it's like, If you don't want to be nuts. here, then don't do me a favor. You either get serious about this, and yes. you need to get serious about this. We ask you 10 times. You said you were taking these medications. We ask you, we said, okay, then we need to know what it is you're taking. You say you're taking Adderall and Xanax. You said you were diagnosed with ADHD, anxiety, PTSD. So we said, okay, send us those records. You said, don't have them. We said, will you get them? Yes, you didn't get them. We asked multiple times for medical records. You said you didn't have them. We said, well, then ask for them. You said you would get them. They still never came. They never came. They never came. We said, okay, take a picture of your prescription so we can at least research what you're taking. You were too lazy to even take pictures and send them to us. Fair enough. And read what I wrote at the top of the page right there in red. Read that out Why loud. Allow Why did we allow her to come here? People are kicking, fighting, scratching to get here, and she won't even comply with, with simple requests. That's what I wrote to the producers several days ago. Why are we even doing this? These people, don't they're not serious about this. You won't even reply to a simple request. You get here and try to run the show and try to do everything. I got 10,000 people lined up down the street, kicking, fighting, and scratching to get here, and you two want to get here and try to run the show. You think I've got time for this? Mm -mm. Seriously? Obviously, you don't know what you're doing, because if you did, this wouldn't be off in the ditch. That's true. If you've got all the answers... I don't have all the answers. Oh, no, you do have all the answers, because you're trying to dictate what's going on. Oh, I was just nervous. You're trying to tell the producers what I, to do. You're trying to tell them what my schedule ought to I, be. If I was as lost as you were, hell, I'd yeah. stop a car on the street and say, tell me what to do. I, I was just, yeah, I was just nervous and I've worried. only been doing this for yeah. 45 years. Yeah, because Miranda was, you know, she's out of her room and and she's down there and uh, and and she just, uh, I'm just was worried that she was going to get hurt. Yeah. So, yeah. because she just does whatever she wants. I said, please stay in your room and please just give me a soda. And you didn't even or, say. I asked you if you wanted a soda first of all. Okay. Yeah, you I didn't care ask about me. sodas. Coming like, up, Kathy matter. gave Miranda an None ultimatum. She has until her 23rd birthday to get her act together. Well, unless she's going to turn 23 in the next five minutes, it's less than that. We'll be right back. I hope that Miranda does understand that her family loves her and wants her to have a productive life. Moving forward in life, I want my mom to know that things that happen in your past don't define who you are. She tells me all the time, that your past follows you. And I've realized that they're mistakes and you need to move on and stop living in the past. I wrote in to the Dr. Phil show to get her help, but I also told Miranda, I think I need help.
Let me tell you what I think, and then you, you guys can do whatever you want to with it. Um, I think you're really a sharp young lady. Somebody that looks like you, has your energy, has your brains, you ought to be killing it. And shame on you. Shame on you. To be as sharp as you are, I mean, come on, you ought to be, you ought to have this world on a string. And instead, you got a smart mouth and a lazy ass. That. Seriously, you should be killing it. Miranda, you should be killing it. There's nothing you can't do. Look, if you've got a problem with alcohol and drugs, then we need to fix it however we need to fix it. And there are, there are two ways. Let me introduce this gentleman right here. Paul here is the CEO from Ocean Recovery. I asked him to come here because if you think that you want and need to hammer this one time and get it right and get it out of your life, then I am willing to make that available to you. This is a treatment center located 90 feet from the beach in Newport Beach, California. I mean, this is the most, one of the most beautiful places I've ever even heard about. It is a comprehensive, long-term, gender-specific program that treats substance abuse and also all the co-occurring disorders and behaviors that are associated with it. True, Paul? Very true. You're obviously a very strong woman, but it takes a lot of courage to say I need help. It's pretty obvious, I think, to everyone watching this. Your life's not on a winning streak right now, and you're not going to stand a chance living at home at 22. Ask for help. This is Coach Mike Bear. He is a life coach. He is CEO of Cash Centers. He is the best-selling author. He wrote the New York Times bestseller, Best Self. Be you, only better. And he didn't know you when he wrote that book, but you would think he did because it is though he wrote that book for you. True, Mike? That's true, and I can relate a lot to you, Miranda. I mean, at 22 years old, I dropped out of college. I got fired from my job, uh, reinvented my life, got scholarships, went to school, became a counselor, and before you know it, 17 and a half years later, I'm sitting here talking to you on the Dr. Phil show. And so you're at that pivotal point in your life where you get to make a choice. You want to work with this man right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Paul, can you help her? Absolutely. Okay. And then, Mike, can you help her? Uh, we'll get to it. All right. right. And you guys know each other. Yeah, we you know can each work other. This out. They've known each so, other. Yeah. All right, so this is your first team right here. And, and we'll do this, and then we'll, we'll get this going and moving like you need to. You deserve that. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay? Yeah. Uh, next up, we'll be the woman who's ready to find love again, but she's come here for some help first. Her story next. <laughs> My next guest, Lori, is a divorcee with three children and three grandchildren. Now, Lori says seven years ago, she got news that changed her life, and she says ultimately changed her looks, and not for the better. Here's Lori's story. In 2010, I found a lump in my right breast. The doctor told me I had an aggressive type of cancer. That was the toughest part. Chemotherapy has saved my life, but it ruined my skin. When I look in the mirror, my skin looks lifeless. I feel 50, I look 90. My main issue is the lines and wrinkles around my mouth, just the sagging and the fallen, deflated face. What bothers me most is my neck. It's a saggy, wrinkled mess. You can pull it and it doesn't bounce back. And our closing date is going to expire. I'm a realtor. I love doing what I do, but my looks do affect the way I work. It is key to me to feel my best. I am looking for a product that will resuscitate my skin again, bring it back to life. I don't want to get out there and date, but if I revived my skin, it would give me the confidence to get back into the dating world. I am too young to look this old. Well, Lori is joining me along with dermatologist and spokesperson for the beauty brand number seven, Dr. Sonia Batra. So welcome to both of you. Now, Lori, you, you said in the tape that you felt something was off with your body for two years, but you ignored that. Why? I was scared, mm -hmm. and I didn't really want to know. And that was a pretty tough lesson to learn. Now I tell my family and my friends, if you 